Roberts. Good afternoon, Jane. Jane. It's Jane. It's Jane. Yes, it's Jane. Sorry, I'm, it's. No problem. It's my eyes. It, was, it's, it, it says Jane. So You're it's probably me tired. Mis, it's me misreading. I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome. You've seen the process. We've got about 10 minutes. Um, Thank you. We've read um, uh, Dr. Lynn uh, Roberts' uh, submission. Over to you. Thank you. So, as you said, I'm Jane Quigley, and I'm here presenting for Dr. Lynn Roberts, who's a senior lecturer in environmental studies at Lincoln University. And Lynn wasn't able to be here today. <coughs> However, I'm very happy to step in for her. So... Like Lynn, I'm a, a citizen of Christchurch, and I have been actively involved, both of us have been actively involved in a number of public initiate, initiatives relating to the rebuild of Christchurch. So the feeling in Christchurch is now very strong that it's time for central government to step back and pass leadership on um, for the rebuild to the council and the people of Christchurch. We want, we want the Greater Christchurch Regeneration Bill to be rewritten to emphasise five main points. And I will briefly state what Lynn has um, had in her submission. Point one, to make the purpose of the legislation to restore and lift the dignity, prosperity, well-being and long-term resilience of the people. Two, to make the legislation about regeneration and transformation and to develop a shared vision. Three, to require authentic and active engagement with communities. Four, return the Local Government Act as the lead legislation. And point five, limit Crown Co to existing CBD anchor projects, existing to complete, co to complete or abandon. So Lynn and I are members of the Viva Project. The Viva Project was established after the earthquakes to support the development of sustainable and community-focused development in the rebuild of Christchurch. So without even trying, we have over 500 people on our database. So these are largely Christchurch people who are passionate about the redevelopment of their city. I'm a passionate Christchurch people, and I care about my city. I'm proud to say that I have, that my four adult children all live in Christchurch. Not only do they live in Christchurch, but they've brought their partners back to live in Christchurch. Their partners come from Scandinavia, Europe, and the Pacific. So they are contributing. They are builders, lawyers, project managers. And most importantly, my son Simon is a beekeeper. Since the earthquakes, oh, I think I missed out the part about the Breathe Urban Village competition, a really important aspect of the Viva project. So the Breathe Urban Village project attracted 58 New Zealand and international entries. The Viva project, along with Jazzmax Architects, were one of the four finalists. We put a huge amount of work into this competition and, and our entry, as did the other entries in the competition. This was an anchor project. It was meant to be the first anchor project built in the city. But sadly, this anchor project has gone nowhere. Since the earthquake, earthquakes, I've had three granddaughters born. They are the youngest generations. And I want to talk about this generation. In the future, I want to show them around our city, show them what we've done. We, the people of Christchurch, the democratically elected local politicians, the business leaders, the NGOs, Naitahu, 
the members of the larger Christchurch community, the people of Christchurch. Let's have the legislation support us to create a city that we're proud to call home because we played a big part in its regeneration. We can say to this youngest generation, look at what we did together. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Uh, Eugenie's got a question. Um, thank you for the submission, Jane. Um, in terms of Breathe, what would you think needs to happen to make a project like that and the Viva project successful? What, was, what do you see as the reasons for it not going anywhere? Um, look, I'm not sure. I mean, this, I guess that's um, an example, Eugenie, of what's happening in the city. We are not sure about the background conversations. Mm -hmm. We are actually meeting with um, Greg Wilson of CCDU mm -hmm. on Wednesday morning to discuss the um, development of a Viva development, a Viva village on the Breathe site. I'm unsure about it. You know, like it's a it's a badly damaged earthquake site. It had a lot of liquefaction on the on the site. It's a it's a TC3. Um, site. So, you know, it's, it would be very, very expensive to build. I'm not sure what the cost of the, um, I'm not sure of the cost of the foundations now, um, because we haven't been party to any, any conversations. <clears throat> if it does go ahead, it's going to be in competition now with um, what Fletcher's will be developing on the East Frame, so that's also concerning. Hmm. So, so uh, it may not have been the best site, is what you seem to say. It may not have been the best site. And, and look, in many ways, Eugenie, that might be in hindsight because it was, um, I think the, the concept was developed nearly four years ago and we know a, quite a lot more about um, lamb damage now in the city. Thanks. No other questions, members? In that case, Joan, can I thank you for uh, being with us today and for um, so eloquently uh, expressing your views. Thank you. Thank you very much.